the demigods. Which side are you on? That's what we have to find out. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to take you to Malibu, California, which is on the beautiful coastline of California, to the J. Paul Getty Villa Museum, where we're going to see an adventure where we get to find out which god we, well, which Greek god we associate with, with the Percy Jackson adventure. So welcome, and I hope you enjoy this adventure to the J. Paul Getty Villa Museum. I've never been to the, over here to the villa. I've been once. It's been a long time. We're gonna have to pay 20 bucks. We have it's paid. Oh, paid, okay. They asked me. Yeah, you have to get ready then, I guess. Yeah, it's. The great thing about the J. Paul Getty Villa Museum is that it is free. The only thing that you have to do is make a reservation. And I would recommend that you make your reservation early because they do book up, especially on the weekends. Parking does cost $20, and you can prepay that when you make your reservation. Okay, we're gonna find some parking. Looks pretty busy, as it is. You can technically take a bus here. They'll let you know which mm -hmm. bus you can take here, but... Oh yeah? Yeah. Do some walking? Do you do some walking. It's not very practical though. There's no subway or anything. Looks like a hospital parking yeah. lot to me. Um, we're taking this pathway up to the museum, which should be like a villa set before Pompeii um, was destroyed. That's the okay. idea. So the idea, like I said before, is like we're coming into an archaeological zone. And the archaeological zone is Pompeii. And if you want to see the real Pompeii, you can go to my other videos, which I'll put a link down below because we've been to the real Pompeii. Nice yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> it's unabashed plugging this. Yes. yes. <laughs> and um, you can pretend like you you're seeing Pompeii before the destruction. But like I said before, we're going on a different type of quest. We're going on a Percy Jackson quest. They have an audio gu guide that you can download, and each one of the exhibits has a number that you can use your phone with to learn more information. But if you do want to go on the Percy Jackson quest, which is a special quest only available on the website, I'll put a link there too. And you can go along with me on that one. Other than that, if I see something interesting, I will plan on sharing it with you. Basically, I'm trying to get to the pond area is what I'm trying to do. And I'm looking for a restroom. And after that, I'll be good. To me, my works of art are all vividly alive. They are in the embodiment of whoever created them. A mirror of the creator's hopes, dreams, and frustrations. J. Paul Getty. Big bags are discouraged here. Here's a general map. But we're not going to be following this map. We're going to go on the Percy Jackson quest. Not me. Hey, dude, he's going to go on his own. They also have some other... Activities that you can do, like the art detective, eh. but it's all the same. Here is the atrium that we just entered into. This is where, in a typical Roman house, you would greet their guests. And up there is what's called a compluvium, which is a hole which brings in light, of course, to the room because they didn't have lights back then. But it also brings in rainwater that would help supply this little pool. And so it was a way of gathering rainwater for the Romans. Not interesting. We are in the portico area here with the reflecting pool. And it's interesting since we've been to Pompeii to see what um, the real place is versus this place. So it's kind of interesting the differences. Here in this inner courtyard is what they call a peristyle. And a peristyle was like an inner courtyard for Romans. And then what's interesting is if you look up at these lamps, you can see it there, hopefully you can see it. All of these lamps have Medusa on the bottom of them. So that's kind of interesting to see Medusa on the bottom of the lamps. Here in the Muses. So over here you have Venus, and then you have the Muses 
which are the different muses of art. So you have a different one for each of the arts. We'll look to follow Pluto, whose Greek name is Hades, which is the god of the underworld. So I guess I'm gonna be going towards the dark path a little bit on this journey. So very interesting. My quest last led me out here to the East Garden, which is supposedly more um, modeled after the kingdom of Hades, the kingdom of the underworld. So should be interesting. I'm not exactly sure how I ended up in the underworld, but that's what's going on. I'm on the second floor, and there's a bunch of marble um, mosaics here and some more statues. I've been just told to go through and go toward the left, which is leading me to this sarcophagus. So we'll see what the sarcophagus has to say. I keep on getting distracted by Hades, but I found the room that I'm supposed to go to. I wasn't supposed to be at that sarcophagus. I was supposed to be here in the room of orators. And I'm listening to Demothenes, who is the orator of truth. So I gotta find out from him more about truth. So that's what I'm doing right now. Interesting quest. You keep on getting sidetracked, but that's how it goes, I guess, in life too. This is Isadora, who Hades just explained to me was wrapped in red before she died and is living in the underworld. And basically, they would put your portrait in much like the Egyptians prepare you for the underworld. So this is what you would look like on the underworld on your journey. Apparently my quest ended up with Apollo. Um, so Apollo is the god of prophecy and music and was an introvert so and there's some of the music and the standard of truth so that's what's going on here so and on the second story i finished my quest found out that i was associated with apollo and now i can just look at the portico and the outside pool beautiful views from out here love the decorations I'm looking at some Mycenaean pottery, so that's kind of cool. These are from the year 2020 BC. Some Plytic female figures here. Very interesting. We're here in the Hellenistic world, which is the part of Persia now. Really cool laurel reef there. That's Greek. Some Ptolemaic Egyptian art here. That would be the time of Cleopatra. She was one of the Ptolemaic empresses of Egypt. Very interesting jewelry here from gold and precious gold. Translucent stones in particular were very valuable within the Egyptian Ptolemaic era. So this would, of course, proclaim wealth and status. The origin of this wreath isn't sure, they say. They know it's about 300 um, BC, but they think it might have been in a funeral rite, so it might have been with a dead person, or it could have been an offering to Apollo. They don't know. Over here they have an exhibit where you can smell the perfumes of Persia and try them out. I think you have to pay for it, but it's interesting. Yes, olive oil, Persian lemon there, saffron, myrrh. You can actually see what myrrh looks like. Everybody gets a bottle, and then you can go look at the different scents, and then they put them together and extract them for you in the pestle. So interesting waiting in line. Denise tried the first scent, yes. which was the hand sanitizer. Oh, do scent. Oh, oh, day hand sanitizer. <laughs> and it is still strong, she says. Yes, yes. And Palette we're going to go see some more traditional ones in a second here, I think. Yep. It's going to be interesting to have rose, cardamom, and saffron. 
Saffron is a very expensive scent. But cardamom is very interesting because that was a very Roman one. Bottom is the olive oil to take on the scent of everything. They told us to keep it for a week before we try it. That's what the lady end said. product, Denise. What was your end product? You gotta show the vial. And you got cedar, cardamom, rose, Persian lemons, and lotus. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see what it's like in a week. That's what is it called again? Chiroscuro uh -huh. is the art term for the way they use light and dark to create Shadow. dimension to make this, uh -huh. you know, column look round. Yeah. And then I think there's another term for how they make like the, what it's called when they add depth here, not just the roundness, yeah. but but yeah. push it back. The perspective, maybe. I mean, I know it's perspective. Force perspective is what. Yeah, yeah, probably. Assyrian room. Looking at the Assyrian portraits from Turkey and Iraq. Celebrating the royal bull hunt. In a gift shop where you can buy chocolate bars and looks like walnut filled cookies and cookbooks and honey and jewelry. <laughs> And cool books about the museum. Lots of cool stuff. Yep, or a bookmark. Just need to get that replica champion. Um, base for a champion Olympian is 225. If you need your amulet so that you can be protected from bulls, that only cost you $150. Well, it turned out that I was with Apollo, and Denise was with Dionysus, but that doesn't surprise me. Also me. And yes. so, hope you enjoyed the tour, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. AJ takes after his mom, but we knew... No! You've won this time, Zeus, or Jupiter, or whatever your name is. Don't worry. We're now leaving, and it's a really beautiful view out on the way out. Look at that view of the ocean. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little video and tour of the J. Paul Getty Museum at the villa. Um, like I said, it's free. You just have to pay for parking or take the bus. And if you want a link to the audio tour that we did, which is the Percy Jackson, see you below. Thank you for watching.